Hi and welcome to Visual Art Photography Tutorials. Today on Neighborhood Photographer we're going to take a look at water reflections. Some will be easy to find, others not so much, and still others will attempt to turn into artistic masterpieces. All that right after this. Before we get underway with our water reflections tutorial today, I'd like to thank all of you who have subscribed to the channel. Much appreciated. For those of you who haven't subscribed yet, I encourage you to do so and you'll be joining a growing group of very enthusiastic photographers. Okay, let's get started. For those of you who've been following along with my tutorials for the last little while, you'll know that one of the things I live by photographically is the saying, it's not what you see, it's how you see it. And that really applies to what's going on here today. So the idea with chasing down water reflections in your neighborhood is to show you the creative possibilities of using water and reflections to show stories in your photography. Okay, so this particular reflection was taken in a swamp close to home. And one of the things I like to do with water reflections is to show a story without showing um, the surroundings so much, getting the story through the reflection. And the, what's reflected in it tells you the story of what's around it. In other words, you can tell that there is a forest. This is taken with a forest around it. And also that it's autumn here in this particular community because of the wild, bright colors of the trees that you see in the reflection. Same thing here. Uh, you can tell that this is in autumn in a swamp, swampish type of area. Uh, it's hard to get your eye on the water line here. It's kind of like a, an, an eye tease a little bit, but you can see that the water line is right here and here and here. Okay. And then all this here is the reflection and you can see the trees and you can see that it's autumn as the, the leaves here have gone red. You can use homes reflected in water to get a different kind of effect too. This taken in Newfoundland, Canada, and this uh, bizarrely colored house, beautiful though, uh, is reflected in the water. Great reflections are everywhere, but sometimes you have to move around a little bit. You know, you have to move closer or move a little further back in order to get the right angle to get the proper reflection. And a note here too, by the way, if you have a polarizer on your lens and you're shooting reflections, I suggest you take it off. Um, because if you have it set or oriented in the improper way, uh, it will take the reflections away. So the best thing to do, just take it off. Over here, again in Newfoundland, this is in a place called Rose Blanche. And for me, uh, what makes this picture is the reflection. You have the ripples in the water but you can see the story down here. You can see what's going on. Of course, it's reflecting what's up above. In this particular one, um, this is just a puddle. It's a dirty, muddy, brown puddle in front of this house. But you know something? For me, it works. It just adds a little something extra and makes your eye move around the image a little bit. You, you have to, you look at this gravel and then you look at this. Not that attractive really, because it's kind of muddy, but it does reflect the home. Okay. Look around. And I had to move forward and move back and move to a different angle to get the right reflection. I had to kind of fight with it a little bit to get what I got. When I moved too close, then I had the wrong angle and it wasn't reflecting enough. And I moved back too far, then I missed most of the house. It's something you have to work on a little bit. And you know, reflections, water reflections don't always have to reflect clearly what's around. You can use it to reflect light, such as in this one, okay? It's later in the day, the sun is setting, it's got really golden tones, and it's reflected in the water on this snowy creek. Or how about this one? This is, uh, the sun has just gone down, and uh, you've got the beautiful color in the water here, and it's going from this red and orange to blue and almost a, like a purple. And then again, again, it's a, a bit of an eye tease here. The water line is, it's hard to see, but it's right here. You have to just follow it along here, almost forms an arrow. And 
look at that. And the, and the color changes almost, almost uh, at the point where you have the reflection start, almost there. But I couldn't get the right angle. That's what I was looking for. But no matter, I was on the, on the shoreline, and no matter where I, I stood, I just couldn't quite get uh, that effect, but, but close. Normally, I do not put the horizon right in the middle, but I thought, well, I'll try it for this one because the reflection of the tree kind of anchors uh, the image down here, and you have your curving wall of this canal and then the tree up here. So I thought, not too bad. I'd give it a shot, you know? So there it is. Uh, water reflections. Again, reflecting the tree and getting a little bit of color from the sky. It wasn't a great sunset that, uh, that particular evening, but you got a little bit of color in there anyway. So this next one I'm showing you is to show you that uh, you can get pretty good reflections along the street. This isn't the shot that I really want to show you. I just want to show you what I came upon while walking down the street after some rain. So what do you do with something like this? I mean, you've got, it's not a particularly nice looking image, uh, but you do see that there is something going on down here. What do you do? This is a case where you move in closer, move in tight, and focus. And then you come up with something a little bit different. And once again, uh, one of these things where you do not see the story up here, you see the story of what's going on in the reflection. Here is a case of uh, the breeze came up a little bit and the water got a little ripply. And guess what? Kind of looks a bit like a painting. But you don't have to stop there. There's no rules in any of this. Who's to say you can't put this building on an angle or maybe just completely turn it 180 and now it's standing up. Completely different orientation, a completely different feel. And for this final image, why not add a painterly effect and take it to another level? Okay, now you can use uh, the, brush, the brushes that are supplied in Photoshop or you can use another program. There are lots of them out there to take something that looks like this, nothing wrong with that, and turn it into something that looks like that. And the ideas are endless. It goes on and on and on. You're only limited by your imagination. So hopefully that gives you a few ideas on water reflection, something to get you going, something to get the whole process started. They can be a lot of fun. Until next time, I'm Ray Scott, reminding you that it's not what you see, it's how you see it. And I'll see you soon.